mods necessary B and G Bender. So you get both. Oftentimes, if, ever, if you've ever looked at the type of mods you need to do, there needs to be a lot of routing. So big chunks of wood taken out. This is like the, the, the older type of uh, B or G Bender. And the other one is where they will drill a hole here and another one that goes across here. And at the back, you will have these levers that when you move the neck this way, it will bend either the B or G. And in this case, we don't have to do any mods whatsoever to the guitar. And it does the B and the G bending with just these two levers here without having to route any new holes. The holes for the strings that are right here, they fit on like 95% of Telecaster style guitars. There's an extra string tree right over here on this model, brass saddles, and there's a spring right in here. I've taken a picture, so I'm gonna overlay that on top so you can see. Very important not to lose this thing because it really helps the mechanism. There's an extra one that comes provided with uh, the kit when you buy it. So it's in here and there's some padding that goes here on your pick guard or right underneath here on the lever so that way it doesn't rub against your uh, your screw and sometimes you even have to take out the screw if you want it to fit nicely so what i'm going to do now is just keep it super simple because the point of this video is to show you that you don't have to mod your guitar and you can basically do this maybe in like 20 30 minutes even if you don't have much experience because it's as simple as taking out the screws, taking out the pickup, putting the new one in, and after that, there's just some fine tuning that you will have to do with the B and G. This is gonna take me longer because I'm yapping. I'm trying to explain how to do the whole setup. So this is gonna take me longer just to demonstrate, but for you at home, if you're installing this bridge on your guitar, I would say 20 to maybe 30 minutes tops without experience should be what it takes. And if you're used to doing this kind of stuff, probably like even half that time. I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna take out the screws. I'm gonna take out this bridge and I will install the new one. Before we get to the install, there's a few things that I wanna point out which are gonna be super useful to you. So with the kit, you're gonna have this piece of wood here that is a shim for the guitar neck. The reason why this is included is that these saddles here, when they're at their lowest, if you install this on your guitar and you find that the action is still a bit too high, you may have to put a shim in the neck pocket of your Telecaster. This means having to remove the neck and here in the pocket that is right here, at the very bottom, you're gonna have to put the shim and put the neck back on. What this is gonna do is just give it a bit of an angle this way so that when you put your bridge on, the string action can be set as low as you need it because if you're as low as you can get over there and the string action is still too high for you, there's like no more room to go over here. So you're gonna have to put a shim. It is a common issue with bolt-on necks so you don't have to worry about it. It's included in there. The other thing that we're gonna be talking about besides the shim, just in case you need it, is gonna be the spring. This spring right here is really crucial to the G bender. So if you lose this part, there is an extra one included with the little bag that comes with it. You have extra screws. You have these little pads here so you don't scratch your pick guard and you have the extra spring, but try and not lose this thing so you don't have to use your backup. And now the third thing you don't wanna lose in here are all the small parts when you take these guys off. So I'm gonna go very carefully and take this off. I have this and this, right? So you don't wanna lose those. I'm gonna set these aside over here and as you remove this guy, you will notice a ball bearing right over here. And there's another one right underneath. So if you lose one of these, then you get friction. They're not gonna be working the way that they should. So try not to lose these because there is no extra one in the bag. If I wanna remove this guy, I'm gonna have to undo this screw just a bit. So I'm gonna go over here. 
Grab this. Okay. Now, as I pull this guy out, got to be super careful because the ball bearing wants to come out and the spring wants to come out at the same time, which is a bit of a pain. You see, it's right there. I'm going to come and set it over here and that spring wants to go flying off. Okay, so I got my spring. I got my ball bearing. This is off and this is the other one. It's the only part about this that is complicated is not losing the crucial parts. So what I'm gonna do here is this. Now I got two. So one goes at the bottom. As soon as you put the longer arm, another one goes in here. There is a groove where the other ball bearing goes. So hopefully you can see that. I have taken pictures on different angles. So you're gonna be able to see that. So before we do any mounting, we have to make sure we take these out. I'm gonna set them aside so I don't lose them. And there we go. So everything is over here. Now I'm gonna install the bridge on the guitar. And uh, if there's anything that I think is worthy of mentioning that if you're a noob like myself, maybe there's a few things. Uh, I, the only one that comes to mind is oftentimes with your guitar, there is gonna be what looks like a wire coming out. That is your ground. You need to make sure that it makes contact with the bridge or else you're gonna get a ground hum. But most of the time it's almost like embedded in the paint. So not that much of an issue. So let's go to the install. So now the first step for me is going to be putting on the guitar pickup because if I mount this first, putting on the pickups is gonna be impossible. And the cool thing that I've noticed is that if I get here with the bridge, there is like, this is a steel bridge and this is also, but it doesn't, this one here, the older one, does not attract the magnets. Like if I look over here, I have about a finger's worth of space between the both of them. And if I use this one, the same space and this pickup is just like really pulling, like the bridge is just like moving. Ah, there you go. So this is, a, <laughs> it seems to be a completely different quality bridge from that one. I don't know what they did different, but uh, it's massive. Like it's, I wouldn't say it's a hell of a lot thicker. It looks about the same thickness. Yeah, it's about the same thickness, but for whatever reason, the magnet is really attracted to this uh, bridge a little more than this one. So a little, a little more attraction towards a magnet. So yeah, very cool. And I can tell whenever I come over here, the pickup is just sticking to it. Small detail, but it's just something I'm noticing. What I'm gonna do now is put on my favorite strings on this guitar, but I'm not gonna put all of them because the one for the B and the G need to put, be put on a last and they're not gonna go through the body, they're gonna be going through the top. So that's one of the cool things with this particular bridge. Hopefully you can see that. It's that right over here, the strings can be top mounted. So if that's how you wanna go, maybe your guitar doesn't have string through, you can go top mounted, or if by any chance, the string alignment is wrong with the bridge and what you have in your guitar body, you can just go through the top. But in my case, I'm looking through here and I can see the white underneath on pretty much all of them. So it seems to be lining up almost entirely perfect. So that's what I'm gonna go through. I, I think these two here, uh, those are the only two I can't see just because they are the ones that are going to take the top mounted part. But for all the other holes, they are lining perfectly. So if you have a Telecaster, I know for a fact now that it's going to line up whether you have an American or a Mexican like mine. And uh, the one that Remco demoed is a Harley Benton and that also works. So that's not an issue. What I'm hoping now is that I'm not going to have to use the shim on the neck 
just because, you know, it's extra work and I don't feel like having a whole lot more work. I just want to go play this thing. So if you're not used to the trick I'm going to be showing you here, I'm just going to show you a trick that has nothing to do with the bridge, but everything to do with installing strings. And this is just the way I was taught to do it by a luthier and you can do it many other ways that will work. So what I do is I go past this post and about halfway here, okay? I bring it over there and what I do is I take this and I wrap it around the post. So I'm gonna get this string here on top and what this does is essentially lock the string in place. So I'm gonna go like this. Yes, I'm old school. I still tune it by hand. I do have one of those little winder thingy, but for some odd reason, I keep losing it and misplacing it every single time. So I don't wanna get ahead of myself here, but from what I'm noticing is that instead of putting a shim, I'm gonna have to raise these guys because the action now is super low. So it looks like I'm not gonna have to put a shim. So now what I've done is before I set the action or anything, I've taken the pickups down just a little bit because pickups are going to create a magnetic field that attracts the strings. And this can really change how your guitar ends up being intonated. So if you wanna tune it properly, just bring those down as far as you can without the pickup falling into the guitar cavity which is what I've done over here for both of these. And then I'm gonna set them back up. So because I'm gonna be doing the intonation for all the strings, I just brought these down. I'm gonna go get my tuner and uh, we'll go to town on this thing. And as soon as I've got these four strings tuned and the action set, I'm gonna to get to uh, the B and G and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so now we're at the part where I'm gonna be checking the action to see if I need to tweak anything on the saddles. And then I'm gonna check the intonation. These are little things that will ensure that you're not gonna think that the bridge is the issue, but rather how you tuned it. And if you look carefully, you have an Allen key right here. So what I'm gonna do is just go in here and take it up just a little bit. So I've taken down the tension, because if you try to do this with the strings when they're fully up to pitch, you can strip these and that is no fun. So clockwise to just increase it just a little bit, and I'm gonna increase it on this side just a tad. So if you wanted, you could go like this and just bring everything up so it lines up with the curvature of this 9.5, which is probably something I'm gonna do just to be on the safe side. So I got this, I'm gonna bring this guy up a bit, yeah, that should work for me. It's not perfect, but at least it follows the curvature of the neck. So let's go back to pitch. So now what I'm gonna do is top mount these two strings after I've done my intonation. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this guy back, kick it back in, look at this. Ain't this a beauty? Okay. So second thing for you noobs that are just like me. Unscrew this guy so you have some wiggle room for your strings. I would say this is the only part where I really struggled <laughs> with this, in uh, this install is actually <laughs> fitting the strings in there. See this? I forgot to put these two. So the way it goes is that we start with the washer first, put it here, then this guy. Little black ring goes right there. And then we secure the whole thing this way. So I'm not gonna tighten it too tight. I'm just gonna firmly put it in and then I'll adjust as needed. So here's my experience being someone who's never done this, having to install the bridge and do all the fine tweaking. I'm gonna share with you some of the frustrations I've had, not because the bridge is complicated, but because I had never done this. And there's a few things that I did that, you know, are stupid, they're stupid mistakes, but you might make them as well. If not, and you're very good at it, awesome. This should be a breeze for you to install. There's really nothing you could do that would completely mess your install unless you, you like lost parts for the bridge that might, you know, 
put a, a, a bit of a break on your install, but if you're careful not to lose anything, then there's really nothing you can do to mess this up. So first off, I'm gonna try and put some overlay uh, videos to kind of showcase my frustrations when I did the install so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Putting it in here was pretty simple. Everything lined up, the strings lined up, the screws were perfect. There were no issues installing the bridge itself. Where I ended up having some frustrations was with the alignment of the B and the G string where I put them directly, I'm gonna go with this camera, I put them directly into the frame, okay? So this part right here that you have on a standard Tele bridge. And I didn't really think about how the hell that was gonna move with this here, right? So these parts are moving, but if the strings are attached to the bridge itself, what the hell makes the string move? Nothing. So I'm, I was being an idiot. I didn't think that the strings would go through this part right here. So this part right here, that's where the ball end of the string goes through. And as you move it, it also moves. Logical for most people, but my stupid musician brain couldn't figure it out. So I put on all the strings and I was like, it ain't working. What did I do wrong? Ugh. First step, right? Then the other snag I hit is that because the strings are going straight this way, that means that the strings have to go through the hole, but there's a bit of an angle that it has to go to the string tree that's right over here. So that is very practical. It keeps a very good string angle, but you have to put a kink into your string and then put it through. I had to unscrew this guy just to make sure that I could move it around give myself a bit of a gap and I use the provided Allen key just to pop the string out. But if you're not as deficient as I am when it comes to, you know, doing stuff like this, you might not have that problem at all. But if you got like big hands and you're just clumsy, uh, you might be sweating on the small stuff. Like the rest of it is pretty simple, but that stuff just was infuriating to me, not because it's not well thought out, it's just because I'm not handy. So I wasn't really thinking about how the string, the string alignment was gonna work anyways. Another thing I forgot to do is put this guy back in. I was putting in the strings, I was moving this around, but I hadn't locked anything in. So it, there's a couple steps there that you have to be logical with. It's like, if you're gonna assemble the thing, assemble it from A to Z. I forgot this part, so. <laughs> Not that big of a deal because everything was perfectly balanced and it was working. But yeah, you might want to consider locking it before you do anything with it. The other part that I think is going to be something that it gets a bit tricky, especially if you're not too familiar with this kind of system, it's going to be the two screws here that take care of the intonation. The reason why that is important is that if you do the intonation on these saddles, you can move like quite a ways back if you want to bring something that's too sharp back down to right in the middle. But there's also this idea of like minor, minor tweaks that you will do. And the thing is, is that as you move this, you see the block here move backwards. So it's micro adjustments. It doesn't take like 30 minutes to adjust, but in my head, I was making bigger moves. So go with very small increments and that's gonna make uh, the whole fine tuning of the intonation much more logical for you. So those are the things that I think were the most important for me. So I'm going to show you what I have up till now. This is the challenge now. I got to learn to play with the G and the B bender because right now I suck. My mind is like not really locked into how I can bend this. I want to bend over here instead of bending over there. So if I go just with my fingers, Again. So that's the other thing that's really cool too with this system is that if you get familiar with where the pitch kind of does this sliding thing here, you can get all the in-between pitches as well. 
I'm, I'm not good at it. I'm going to have to practice for quite a while, but I'm going to be making a video where I show you how I get comfortable with this thing. I'm going to be talking about what I had to adapt in terms of my playing. So obviously as I play, these are in the way of how I usually pick. So I'm probably going to have to find a new way to play with the Telecaster and I always anchor my pinky like this on the guitar anyways most of the time especially if i'm doing lead parts so if i i got my finger here it shouldn't be that much of a transition to you probably get what i mean here it's just going to be instead of doing like the cowboy picking thing i'm probably going to have to finesse this a little more so the next video i'm doing is me learning how to play with this bridge i'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of different techniques that we have as guitar players when you want to implement something like this because you if you've seen the traditional ones they use an anchorage system where they just bend the guitar down and you can't do this here so you really have to think i'm going to get to learn how to play it it's still a a, a new muscle i have to train here but all in all, this is absolutely killer because I've never had anything like this on a guitar and I've never played with a G or a B bender. Now I've got both. I don't know, maybe at some point I'm gonna decide to put like the straight ones instead or maybe mix the straight one with the curved ones. We'll see how my, hands, my hand adapts. But that's for this video that's coming up right over here. So just click on that one and I'm gonna see you in that video. Cheers. <laughs>